Hello friends, bears greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Dr. Viktor Fursov, I'm research entomologist, beekeeper and teacher. And this is my channel about insects, about science of entomology, science about insects and some invertebrates, zoology, zoology, science about animals. So welcome to my channel to watch different stories, lectures, video scripts about insects and invertebrates. I do like to show different original videos on my channel, so you can enjoy it. If you have not seen these insects in the nature, so you will be surprised. If you have questions, welcome to ask your questions in the comments. If you have email on Gmail, so you are allowed to write comments under this video. And of course, if you are belonging to English speaking audience, if you are in English speaking audience, welcome. If you are not in English audience, just go out of my channel because I do speak English quest language and English language, if English language is native for you or just a little bit native or you feel it yourself, but this is your lovely native language, English. Yes, so you are my audience. So if you like to speak English language, if you like to talk, read, write, communicate in English language, welcome to my channel. Because sometimes I'm talking also about different travels and conversation, of course, is in English. I have recorded many videos in other languages in Russian, but this is for Russian speaking audience. But now this country is considered to be aggressor. So, you know, this is enemy for Ukraine in the present moment. And we don't know how it will be changed in the future. That's why we say Ukraine forever. And we are speaking English language in Ukraine for English speaking audience and for English understanding audience. So welcome to my channel to speak, read, write, and listen, hearing, understanding in English. And of course, if you like my stories, if you like my video stories, you can send me some donations on my pay PayPal, on my Patreon page, or just ask questions via my email. Yes, this is my private email. So you can ask your questions about your insects or about invertebrates which are living in your house, in your stock, in your kitchen, in your bathroom, somewhere around. If you afraid of spiders, maybe spider if you're afraid of spiders. No, 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 I do like them as well because they are invertebrates. And we just had a course of zoology of invertebrates in university. So that's why I do like even very surprising, unusual, amazing invertebrates. So and in, I guess so that invertebrates like this octopus is not invertebrate. Or where is your stone bones? No bones. Invertebrate. He likes me very much as well. So write your questions and comments on my email. And don't forget about Patreon page if you send me just for donation for a cup of coffee. Yeah, you are really a great guy or a great girl or great lady. Welcome. I would be very much appreciated for your kindness and attention. So comment. It's also a very great feedback, feedback, feedback from audience. And this is introduction. And let's start from the beginning from this wonderful book. I at once I had the opportunity to talk about this book a little bit because I read a special presentation about it. I was speaking about insects in Japan. But now I will talk about insects not only in Japan, but also in Ukraine. In Ukraine, I have wonderful insects. In Japan, insects even absolutely amazing, brilliant, interesting, wonderful, beneficial, and some pests as well. But I do like beneficial insects and do like interesting insects. And I do study beneficial insects, parasitoids there in my background here, these insects are named parasitoids, parasitoids, tiny parasitic wasps. I do encourage you to know more about parasitoids. I will be talking about them in special lecture, one by one, one taxonomy group for another group. But now we will be talking about this book because this book is named Days of Insects, Life in During the Whole Four Seasons of the Year. And it's written by 
Mitsuhiko Imomori, wonderful, wonderful Japanese author because he wrote and published several books. This one of these books was from my friends as a gift. I really appreciate my friend who is just gave me this is wonderful gift because I have communication with my friends. Sometimes they are sending me letters, even now in the what time. In what time they are sending me so wonderful, brilliant private letters. So I just my address is hidden here. But this is so colorful picture this envelope and these envelopes they came from japan yes japan is far away more than ten thousand kilometers out from ukraine but japan is supporting us morally ethically and even financially for some ukrainian refugees who escaped from military zone and who just moved to japan at the present time and also even japan helping with some ammunition and some little bit military equipment so thank you very much for that and thank you for japanese people for my japanese friend who sending me this some letters of support this is my with my address home address it's not for public this is private but so but if you like to receive wonderful letters with wonderful japanese post postcards and you know very nice colorful stamps this is a way where is a way how to communicate how to exchange by letters and some interesting messages not only on email but in letters what's about book what's about book about insects this book is about four seasons and about insects during four seasons and i do like to start from the winter because now the winter winter here no uh, records about insects in, in january february and march but what's about winter about december december is also period of which is difficult for insects how it's written you see here this is a picture which is belonging to the december and with some wonderful small notes about observations during the winter time picture of event and small description here during the all 31 day of december which were observed by the author masuhiko imamori in japan and for instance here in december insects are, are wintering that's why it's possible to find some even dead insects or some remnancy of insects and of course to observe here on the top these are rice fields rice fields are sleeping as well actually of course winter in japan is mild even in the middle part not only in hokkaido in sapporo it's very cold but here you can observe this is like instruction for observations for insects in winter time then in spring summer and autumn what you can observe in winter time you can move to a forest you can move around fields you can find some dead trees and you can look under the bark of trees you can find some even some click beetles sleeping inside the wood some cocoons inside the wood some wood some wood beetles some chaffers in in wood and of course you, it's possible to find some pupa of cuparums of butterflies or moths night moths which are very different and widely distributed of course in japan and as well as in ukraine but in japan they're very interesting because this is semi-tropical region so some species are not distributed in such places like in ukraine but some species also distributed even in japan and in ukraine as well so then of course here some carabita beetles carabita beetles sleeping under the bark some wasps can be found under the bark of course some ladybug ladybugs beetles sleeping under the bark and many others many others but if you observe some insects around even in the winter possible to find old small nest of polystina these are wasps 
tiny wasp and this is a tiny nest or sometimes bee wasp nest of Vispida family. And here some very tiny, very careful observations on the bark of tree. I know my friend's entomologist who has just searching for some pupa, you sleeping pupa on the branches of trees and we're very observative in the springtime where we're collecting pupa of butterflies, daytime butterflies and night moths, and we're breeding them in captivity in special cages for their breeding, for lay laying, and then just for this, for the conservation of these butterflies, not for selling butterflies, not just for business, for shop, but for conservation to improve environment, where breeding them in captivity near their house and sending these butterflies back to the nature. So Japanese people are so very careful about nature. But some Ukrainian people, I know some of my friends who send me some insects, some butterflies and moths for exhibition. We're also doing the same experiments. One my friend in Chernigo region, he is doing the same, breeding butterflies inside his house, in his flat, during the okay summertime and autumn time and also sometimes releasing the butterflies and moths outside of house to the nature to the forest not for feeding birds but for improvement of natural environment because these butterflies will fly around fly away and lay eggs somewhere in natural conditions in natural environment and and population on some butterflies and moths will be growing a little bit step by step and population will be improved. So here some observations and some findings on bark. And here, even if I delighted very much this picture of house, Japanese farming house. Here some observations near and around the house. For instance, some Asian ladybugs this harmonia xeridis, which is considered sometimes pests in houses because go into some houses for overwintering. But here, this is a picture of old Japan or normal house in a village, like farming house in a village, and some locations, some locations where you can find some insects like pupil chrysalises of butterflies, some group of moths, somewhere near the roof, near the top of a house, somewhere on bark of trees, near the fence, in some places, possible to find some shells or just living like here, some shells of chrysalis or here some shells and pupa of butterflies. Or here these are spreading around this uh, crawling around on the wood, this Asian ladybugs. Well, next time we will be talking about next season, maybe about spring from this book. But now let's start to see some videos from the nature in Ukraine, and I will comment this video. Yes, of course. We enjoy very much to go to the nature in the spring and summertime. And in summertime, flowers are flowering, uh, trees are green, just skies are blue. And of course, even we do not think about these bloody aggressors. If uh, this is a quiet day, if it is not a quiet day, this is difficult. In a quiet day, just flowers are beautiful. And some butterflies, some tiny insects coming to these flowers, which insects? Pollinators, pollinators come in. Bees, butterflies, and bumblebees, wonderful pollinators, and also solitary bees. In a city, this is a, these are flowers growing in a city, not too many honeybees, honeybees, but they are presented, presented in some certain places because some people have private Apiaries, even in city, even in city, but many, not so many, but some solitary bees come in and some bu bumblebees come in as well. Solitary bees not so visible because they are very tiny 
a number of them were just limited and they were flying mostly in the springtime but bumblebees are growing and somewhere in the middle of summer already in june in july right here in some workers of bumblebees when they're already quite big the first workers working bumblebees smaller coming in may and june they're small and then uh, the female the queen are laying eggs and breeding the new generation of bigger size workers so workers receiving more food and they will have a little much bigger little half of size of queen of bumblebees which other insects you can find i show you it's possible to maintain it's possible to maintain in the springtime artificial house artificial hotel for bees for solitary bees and this is a part of a bee hotel bee hotel which was kindly sent me to one of your ukrainian beekeeper who is keeping this artificial he's he's with a very wonderful ukrainian surname zaviruha zaviruha which means snowstorm snowstorm wonderful surname thank you very much for your kindness for sending this artificial bee house bee hotel for solitary bees for mason bees of the genus osmia osmia these bees are breeding sometimes for commercial purposes because some people are collecting these cocoons you see here brown colored cocoons some cocoons with holes because i put them in a warm conditions and i forgot about it so that's why i opened this artificial house i needed to collect cocoons to put them to the cool place because i did it approximately in october time it was necessary to do early somewhere in spring i did it maybe in december already and i recognize that there are some cocoons just were eaten by parasites you see here so in the center brownish place this is only feces of parasites some parasitic flies and from the right side just balls of flower flower pollen which were not eaten by larvae of bees and also larvae of bees were destroyed just destroyed by parasites so not so easy to breathe them because many insects are dying because of parasites but this one is coming this wonderful guy is coming and this is a male male of mason bee with long antenna very hairy a little bit not so big small size guy size about one less than one centimeter one centimeter mason bees also may are very convenient because they are not stinging they are not belonging to stingless bees but they are not stinging because their sting is small small it cannot penetrate skin of humans so and so and in the springtime this is important we should be coming outside of their artificial nest for searching females and because this is a male males are coming early and then coming females yes this is a male of osmia rufa and this is a female will be next one they're very kind of similar like a bumblebee very very close firstly you can see this is a bumblebee so hairy hairy bumblebee also with mandibles hairy body but small one yes if you see hairy body and small one and with similar black and red coloration this is not a bumblebee you should be very careful because bumblebee of the same size will have a little bit different shape and only just the top of the body will be red bombus lapidarius a little bit similar of coloration but this is a mason bee this is female and female is stinging but stinging just a little bit little bit can penetrate your skin but with the behavior is like 
the same like a bumblebee. Bumblebees like also to put on the back and just show this is a bumblebee and this is my sting. I can sting you and open mandibles to show I am just I can cut your finger with mandibles. So you're afraid about me and making maybe a little bit noise. Similar behavior like for bumblebees. And of course, from the same nest will come females and males all together. They come in from a, this bee hotel. Males and females are mating and fighting in themselves very easily. So on the upper side, this is male with long antennae and smaller size and a big size and then a shorter antenna. This is a male, female female and male of a Osmia rufa. Osmia rufa, very beneficial pollinator because this pollinator is coming in the springtime when pretty cold, rather cold, and other pollinators and even bumblebees flying just in very few and honeybees are flying just near the apiary, near apiary, not far away. And they're important pollinators for spring for earliest ephemeroids or spring flowers, somewhere even in, in April, after the first snow is out, coming out, even though just only the sunshine is coming, very it's becoming warm, 15 degrees, 16 degrees under the sunshine. And these bees come in from the cocoons, hatching from cocoons very quickly. So we may have a difficult time to find flowers. And here this is a mating, mating activity of a male on the top. Male, male is buzzing, buzzing more than with his wings and trying to, to persuade female for mating. Buzzing and also using antenna, using antenna before mating. These, the size of this solitary bee is about one centimeter, it's very they are smaller, they are smaller than honeybees, smaller than honeybees, but they are much hairy, more hairy. And also you see different different sizes in honeybees, males bigger than workers and very fat. But here female is bigger than males. And also on the head, there are some kind of like horns, horns, two horns on the head of here on the left side. On head, there, there are two horns on the head of these bees, mason bees, Osmia genus. And here I show you some tiny, very tiny wasps. You say, what's about wasps? How wasps can be tiny? Yes, yeah, some wasps called parasitic wasps, and they're very tiny. Parasitic wasps can be very small from 0 0.5 millimeter, half of millimeter, up to five millimeters. And these are phytophagous wasps, calcid wasps of a family Megastigmide or previously family Torimide. They're phytophagous because they're living inside seeds of dog, wild dog grows, in seeds of rows near your house. And at the present time in the winter, they're just overwintering. They're sleeping inside seeds. And these wasps, they hatched in last spring, somewhere in May time, after exposition in a cold place in my kitchen and in the laboratory, we hatched and just I gave them just drops of honey. And we were very happy to feed on the drops of honey and the phytophagos. They have a long stick on the, on the end of the body and this stick is named ovipositor. It's a long stick because they are living inside fruits of rose, inside seeds of fruits of rose. And we need to penetrate skin of uh, green uh, fruits of rose, mm, probably somewhere in a sp in springtime, in springtime, to lay eggs inside. And they are hatching from, from dry seeds and from dry fruits of wild dog rose. 
uh, widely distributed all around the world, and they belong into the genus Megastigmus. Megastigmus. So these are females of Megastigmus phytophagus calcidwasps. And these are calcid wasps of different families on the background, on the, on the background of my presentation on this poster. Also some Dorimide and Megastigmide and some calcid wasps. So if you keep some see some some fruits of rose in your house, you can cl close the ba bag, you can close the jar and observe emergence of these wasps in the springtime. So if you can collect them, you can send me a message and ask questions. What is this species? I can identify species for you because there are some different species in different cities in different countries all around the world. And these are another insects which can be in your house. Why, why, why were well, so many of them? These are beetles. So many of them, the crowd of beetles, a swarm of beetles. Yes, this is artifact all together artificially because I put them all together from the jar with the seeds and these are weevils with a crowd of weevils of rice beetle rice beetle Cetophilus oryza Cetophilus oryza which is pest of different seeds and also some products seeds like corn wheat rice if we are selected all together by making such kind of crowd not for mating, but for escaping from the situation. We're crawling all together and we're helping to each other just to escape. Because if we're together in a jar, in a closed jar, we're escaping step by step, we find the way how to escape. And in a crowd, much easier to find the way because we're crawling on the top of the crowd. So you can come outside of a jar and fall, fall out from the jar very easily. Or we are flying as well. Cetophilus oryza and some other weevils were flying very well. We're infesting stock of rice, corn, wheat, different rains, becoming pests in a stock of different rains for rain foods. So, but we can penetrate even some bags, just through the crevices and bags, can infest it, infest the grain. So they are considered to be very important and dangerous pests of rain and food products. So sometimes you can buy them in a shop, but not so often. Because, but usually they're coming from one place to another place with infested rains, with infested food. And I have a culture for investigation of parasitoids of these beetles. But they are living in a food stock, in a rain stock, in different countries all around the world. And finally, I want to show you this interesting light trap, light trap from Ecuador. Some of my Japanese friends were collecting insects in Ecuador. Yes, we were coming. And we found here even this big Titanus beetles. Titanus beetle, absolutely amazing, fantastic. The biggest beetle in the world, biggest beetle in the world. You see the size about just the whole palm, not only finger, but whole palm, huge beetle, huge beetle, up to 11 centimeters. This is considered to be small one. And up to 16 centimeters, just the body with head and illiterate. These are big. Titan beetles, the giant Titan beetles, which is living in Venezuela, in Ecuador, in Brazil, in Suriname, in French Guyana, in these tropical countries. And amazingly, this individual came to the light because many males are coming, they're just crawling on the ground. Maybe just from my friends put them, put this individual on the light just to show it better because 
Uh, in original situation, many beetles were just flying certain distance and then just crawling on the ground. It's considered that mostly males are coming to the light trap, not females. And it's even for big titan beetles, the origin, original host plant is still unknown till this 21st century. Or maybe the, this is a big, big biological secret because some people are trying to protect beetles in their natural environment. Otherwise, some buyers, some commercial commercial shops will buy, will collect with local, with the help of local people, all insects and collect all beetles and sell them for big money. So, because you see here, this is a light trap, and how it's possible to collect many insects with a light trap, many moths coming, many beetles coming, many different orders of insects coming on the light trap, especially in tropical, tropical region. Because if you have opportunity to go to, to tropics, you have opportunity to put light trap in permitted place, if you have permission for this collecting, because many countries are not allowed to make collecting in the areas and some crazy collectors are uh, receiving some penalty, high penalty, some money which is paid to government of the country for this criminal activity in some countries. But if it is permitted, it's possible for entomologists, for amateurs to collect some insects using light traps. So you can write in comments from which country you have seen you have seen my videos and you are coming to my videos later in recorded mode. And did you collect insects? Do you collect insects? Which kind of insects are interesting for you? And it will be interesting to make some co communication with you about insects. Which group of insects do you like? If you do not like insects, if you hate insects, if you want to get rid of insects, write it in the comments and ask me questions how to get rid your insects if you need help if you need help so i can advise you some activities how to get rid insects or some invertebrates in your house bathroom toilet kitchen balcony if you have some unpleasant invertebrates in your house sometimes it's possible so let's communicate let's ask questions write comments and welcome to visit my patreon page for financial support i don't mind to have a cup of coffee from donations if you send it using your very nice golden credit or platinum uh, credit card now it's very easy to send one dollar for coffee using credit card 10 minutes and some money coming very funny very interesting and this is modern technology so if you want to have new videos about insects welcome in comments which insects are interesting for you which group of insects are interesting for you and which country are you from or secretly which city are you from if you are not in a country which is aggressor so you can write another city if you for security for security reasons so at least so you, we can communicate in english or some other languages as well for friendly entomologists, for friendly zoologists, for friendly amateurs who can speak and who can understand, who can listen and understand English language. And thank you for coming. Best wishes. And nobody didn't ask questions. Not too many people know English, I guess. So maybe watching me just for fun. So fun was coming next time as well. Thank you for watching. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Bye bye. Welcome to my Patreon page. Thank you for watching. Good luck and see you soon. Okay, to be continued.